So, to continue our discussions about electronic acoustics, I wanted to walk you through a project that we did a number of years ago where we suggested electronic acoustics and the owner decided to go a different way. <laughs> So this project was originally intended to be a recital hall and they wanted the hall to be completely acoustic. They didn't want to have any variable acoustics, no rotating walls or draperies or other things. So anyway, they wanted a room that was highly reactive where you could put a uh, guitar player on stage or a flute or whatever string quartet and the entire room would hear equally well from all seats. So this type of a room we discussed with them, we said, look, this, this can work really well. However, when you design a room like this, that's extremely live, you can't put certain things in it. So we uh, agreed in principle that there would never be more than 15 players of any type on this stage, that it was going to be classical music only, no contemporary music, and that the room would be highly reactive. We discussed electronic acoustics. They decided not to go that way. We discussed possibly having large draperies and other things that could be used to dampen the room at certain times. They didn't want to do that either. So what we developed was uh, something you can see in this image, which you can't really see, but it's here. And the guys will put that image up for you to look at. So we designed a room using Gaussian waveforms and Gaussian waveforms are developed by a particular math formula that creates curved surfaces that don't create actual echoes. It diffuses sound. So in essence, as the sound develops in the room, it mixes it around. So you can see the side wall elements, these curved elements up at the top, there's some devices called mod fusers, which are designed to bring energy back down to the stage that's heading up. You'll also notice around the perimeter of the room, a soffit system that we put in for two purposes. One was to develop sound back down to the edges of the seating area. And then up above the ceiling, there's a large volume of air that develops resonance above the seats. Now in this next image, which is a section of the room, you can see the elements down by the seating area that are developing the sound for the seats, the ceiling above, and then you notice a very large air cavity above the ceiling. That is a resonating, resonating chamber. And then the other thing that was an interesting feature of this space is there's an isolated ceiling system which is loaded on springs that allows rehearsals to occur on two upper level areas with zero sound entering into the recital hall. It was a very successful implementation. Just brought that up for the heck of it. So anyway, we have this room that is now extremely reactive. And looking at another image from the back of the room, you can see the same kinds of uh, surfaces, you know, around the whole stage. So when this room was completed, the primary uh, people at the college came in, listened to it, and they made some really, really nice testimonials about the room. They said that this was one of the best rooms they'd ever heard. They actually gave us permission to put that in writing. So it's, uh, it's out on our website and other places. And what their comments were is that you could hear equally well in any seat in the house, as well as everywhere on stage, any instrument on stage. So that this was a room that literally made every seat in the house good. There was a tenor, an Irish tenor who came over to sing at a concert there. And he actually stopped in the middle of the concert and made a comment to the audience. That I have only a few times in my life been in a room with such exquisite acoustics. As he said. And once again, we asked him if we could use that quote, which he said we could. So we have that up, I'm sure, as a graphic on the screen now, too. So we've got this room that was completed. It's really pretty. It's got a lot of really nice things going on in it. Um, everything seemed to be going well got great reviews in newspapers so concerts that were happening everybody was saying oh this is wonderful this is one of the best rooms in the area spectacular this is great and then we heard some really bad things about four or five months out 
and I heard about a review in an Albany newspaper about a horrible concert. So we decided to go back and look at what happened. So I contacted uh, the, uh, the college and they said that uh, this was a 50 piece orchestral ensemble. It would never be more than 15 players. And the comments from the audience were that it was so loud, that it was overbearing, that the sound was all muddled, and basically it was a mess. So we got back with the end users and we said, look, you know, we talked about this before and we came back to them with some suggestions of things that could be added to deaden the room. But the problem, of course, is once you deaden it, it's more dead, so all of the other uses where everyone thought it was spectacular, they suffer. So we also heard that they did the electronic fusion music in the room, that it was going to be classical music only, no contemporary music, from which it was an unmitigated disaster. So what ended up happening is all the primary uses for classical music, the room's spectacular. Everybody loves it, small ensembles, up to like a 15 piece, you know, brass ensemble, things of that nature. Everybody thinks it's a fantastic space. But when they wanted to try to make some money with the room, that's where they're trying to book in these more contemporary, larger ensembles that draw larger audiences who pay higher ticket prices. And they found, as we had discussed during design, that that does not work in this room. Now, there's an image I'm gonna bring up now, which is showing some perforated woods that are in the back of the room that absorb sound. Very few of the surfaces in this room actually absorb sound. Almost all of them reflect and diffuse sound. And by diffuse, that means, imagine it's like mixing it in a blender. It's making it nice and even throughout the whole space. These perforated woods could have been used throughout the space. We could have done perforated elements with different tunings and had a much deader room with good diffusion and still had the ability to have a you know a decent ensemble in there but without that warmth and that incredible what they call exquisite sound quality that you get from the way it was designed what we wanted to do was to actually use more of these absorptive materials to control the room and i'm going to show you now an image of a rehearsal space upstairs where you'll notice We've got some of the same wall elements, but we've got a lot of other materials. These fabrics you see are absorptive materials. So in these rehearsal rooms, because they're longer term exposure for your ears, uh, large ensembles, we created rooms that have partial absorption, partial diffusion. You'll notice diffusive elements on the ceiling. There's a whole bunch of things that are going on in these spaces that are different than the main recital hall. If we'd done the main recital hall with a combination of absorptive and diffusive materials, and then it put in electronic acoustics so that when they had the solo guitar player on stage and you wanted the whole room to hear it as if it was the way it actually ended up sounding, you could do that electronically. And then when you wanted to sell a tickets out for, let's say, a jazz fusion concert, you could use the same room, make a bunch of money, turn it off, reduce the volume level, change the tone of the room, and do all the things that electronic acoustics is capable of, which is basically to tune the room for multiple uses on the fly. You could just say, today I'm a lecture hall, tomorrow I'm a classical recital hall, the next day I'm doing jazz fusion, and yeah, it's still with some limitations. It's still only X amount of feet from the stage to the back of the room. You really don't want to have, I don't know, Chick Corea's electric band in there. It's going to be way too much sound pressure. But this is a hall that I will say it's, it's always fun to design an acoustic environment that turns out really, really well. But to then hear bad things about it because it was used for purposes that it was never intended for, that's where it's challenging. And we had had the discussion they're still happy with the space. Uh, they've obviously ad adopted a, <laughs> a different attitude about how they book the room. But the space itself could have been far more flexible with electronic acoustics. Our next segment after this one, we're going to talk about a very successful recital hall that we did that is fully equipped with electronic acoustics that has 
that flexibility and capability of doing so many more things than a live room that has only one option.